Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, why are we here on this corner? Because we're here to minister the good news, to preach the good news. You know, when you look at the news, when you look at CNN, when you look at MSNBC, there's always bad news. You're always criticizing people. It's like there's no peace on the news. There's no peace. And then when you try to turn on to your favorite television show, there's still no peace. There's violence, there's sex, there's drama. Look at all the drama shows that are on TV right now. That's not good news. That's not good news at all. And then it gets people excited, that drama on your favorite show gets people excited. And then people find that drama as normal. And since they find it as normal, they bring it into their home. They bring it into their household. It's as if they embrace that drama on their favorite TV show. But let me reveal that Jesus came to bring the good news, the good news of salvation, that these bodies are gonna pass away. But that's not bad news, that's actually good news because these bodies always suffer. These bodies, these bodies are slowly dying of old age, of sin, so we're slowly disintegrating in these bodies. But your soul is forever lasting. Your soul is going to live on after your body passes away. It's a proven fact. You can see it every single day. People are passing away every single day. They're dying every single day. Funerals every single day. But their soul leaves their body and it goes somewhere. There's only two ways that it could go. Either goes to the place where things are always destroyed, where there's no there's no holiness, where evil and sin is constantly being destroyed and it just lives there, which is hellfire. Or your soul goes to the one who you love, who you're so used to spending time with every single day. Your soul hmm. goes to our Heavenly Father. Your soul is in, the, is, in the, is in the presence of Jesus Christ in the heavenly realms, in the heavenly places, in the kingdom of God. So there's only two choices. Your soul is forever lasting. Either it'll go to hellfire or it'll go to the kingdom of God with it's all peace. But let me reveal Jesus to you in this way. Hebrews chapter 2, 14. Because God's children are human beings made of flesh and blood, the Son also became flesh and blood. For only as a human being could he die, and only by dying could he break the power of the devil who had the power of death. Only in this way, could he set free all who had lived their lives slaves to the fear of dying. Slaves to the fear of dying. Why do human beings fear dying? Why is it that in, in their conscience, in the very essence of their soul, why do human beings fear dying? Why? Why do we fear dying? Is it because we know that we're going to be, our life is going to be judged? Is it because we feel that all we have is this life. No, that's a lie. We fear dying because of the lie, basically. Because we believe the lie. We believe, like, people live so much in the flesh, they live so much in their body, that when they feel that they're dying, they fear death. They fear death. But Jesus, didn't fear death. That's why he defeated death and he defeated the grave. So if anyone fears of dying, I'm not saying you're supposed to jump in front of a car or jump in front of a train or you're supposed to just jump off a roof, no. But if you naturally die and then you fear of your natural death, why? Why? 
If you have Jesus, why do you fear dying? If you know where you're going to go. Only in this way could he set free all who have lived their lives as slaves to the fear of dying. We also know that the son, Jesus, did not come to help angels. He came to help the descendants of Abraham. The descendants of Abraham are those who endure in their faith. During their faith in God. Therefore, it is it was necessary for him, Jesus, to be made in every respect like us, his brothers and sisters, so that he could be our merciful and faithful high priest before God. Then he could offer a sacrifice that would take away the sins of the people. Since he himself has gone through suffering and testing, he is able to help us when we are being tested. He is able to help us when we are being tested. Jesus is able to help us when we are being tested. Being tested. Being tested by sin. Being tested by the devil. Being tested. Sometimes we're being tested. You know what? This morning, I was being tested a bit by, by Satan. Satan was like, oh, go ahead and look, look at some porn. Check it out. Just check it out real quick. Come on, just one time. Come on. And I was so resistant. I was saying, no. Because I felt thousands of times. I failed thousands of times when he said, just go ahead and check that out. And then I felt deep in my heart after I checked that out. All those thousands of times when I checked that stuff out in my soul, I felt like, like, like tilt, tilt, tilt. It felt like a, a, a cavern just hidden upon wooden, like wooden, a wooden desk. Just bang, tilt, bang, tilt, bang, tilt. And I felt so shameful. All those thousands of times, just imagine being, just feeling shameful thousands of times in your soul because of what you have done. What you have done as far as being faithful to God, as far as being faithful to Jesus. But those thousands of times, each time I failed, each time I felt shame, each time I felt guilty, I always came to God, I always came to Jesus. I fell on my face, I fell on all my knees to God, and I said, Lord, please forgive me. Lord, please take this away, this guilt away. And the thing is, is that, like, in just a flash, when I submitted myself to Jesus, the guilt went away. Because I was truthful. I was honest about my sin. I was honest about my guilt. I was honest. I wasn't trying to hide it like God isn't looking. Jesus isn't looking. Jesus isn't listening. I wasn't trying to hide it. But I was truthful. And I said to God, I said, thank you, Lord. It felt like, whew, it felt like, it felt like a building was lifted off of my back. That guilt felt like a building upon my back. And then when I prayed to the Lord, when I surrendered How are you guys? myself yeah. to Jesus, God You guys got a you. relationship with the King? We do. You spend time Hallelujah. with him daily? Yeah. Awesome. Praise God. When I submitted myself to Jesus, it felt like he lifted the building off of me. He lifted up the guilt off of me. And yeah, I failed time and time and time again, but I knew who to go to, who had the power to lift the guilt off of me, the shame off of me. Every time I failed, I learned a lesson about how deceitful the devil is, how he lies, how he speaks, the tone of his voice, who he sends, he sends his demons. You say, hey, look at this, check this out. Check out this poem. It's good for you, isn't it? Remember this girl? Remember this one right here? Remember this guy right here? Remember this guy right here? Because I was bisexual at some given point in time. Come on, check this out. And then I failed like hundreds of times. But because 
I knew who to go to, Jesus Christ, and submitted myself and was honest with Jesus Christ about my sin, about my guilt, about my shame. He lifted off that shame and guilt off of me when I couldn't lift it off myself. Y'all know how it is. A lot of people know how it is. To keep your shame, to keep your guilt, and to say, oh, it's not all that bad. I'll just keep this, this just belongs to me. This, this is fine. They don't even call it sin. A lot of us don't call the things that are sinful in God's eyes, sin in our own eyes. So a lot of the things that we call, a lot of the things that are sinful in God's eyes, we, as just normal people, we don't even call it sinful. Matter of fact, I'll say this, sometimes we try, try to follow the Ten Commandments, but we don't have the power. Instead, it just leads us to sin. We have no power. We try to follow the Ten Commandments and say, oh yeah, you know, I'm not killing anyone, I'm not stealing from anyone. But have you ever bared false witness that's called lying? Have you ever lied? Even one of those so-called little white lies, that's lying too. Telling half-truths, that's lying too. Well then you broke in the commandment. Thou shalt not bear false witness. But in the Bible it says, even if you break one of the commandments, then you're breaking all of them. But that's why we need Jesus. That's why we need Jesus. Because it's impossible for us to just follow all the laws and the commandments and saying I'm perfect. It's impossible to be perfect yourself. That's why we need, that's why we have someone who walked upon this earth for 33 years, perfect. He came from the kingdom of God, perfect. Lived for 33 years, perfect. And then he died perfect was resurrected perfect by the power of God. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Everything perfect about Jesus. Sitting on the right hand of the Father, perfect. For your benefit, perfect. But why wouldn't you wanna to go to someone who has the perfect answer, the perfect solution, the perfect counsel, the perfect word for you? Are we perfect? I think the big problem is pride. We have a lot of pride in ourselves. It doesn't matter if you're male or female. We have a lot of pride in ourselves. We think that we got things all handled. Once we turn 18, once we turn 21, pride. The pride of life and the achievements of life make us who we are. And then we say we don't need Jesus all the time. We just need Jesus on Sunday. Well, we just need Jesus on Saturday. See, I'm keeping the Sabbath, I'm keeping the Saturday. And that's all we say. We only need, a lot of people say, I only need Jesus when someone passes away. When, when I'm on my way to someone's funeral. Or when I'm running out of money, help me Jesus. But Jesus is always available to you. Jesus doesn't have a schedule. Jesus. It's always available to you all day and every, every day. So why wouldn't we want to be available to Jesus all day, every day, when he has the perfect answer, the perfect solutions for your life? Jesus tells you to turn left. That's a perfect left. Jesus tells you to turn right. That's a perfect right. Jesus says, go straight ahead. Perfect path. Perfect. You see, Again, God created everything perfect. So perfect, so wonderful, so beautiful. So his ways, every single thought, every single whisper that he whispers in your ear is perfect, 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 perfect. So why wouldn't anyone want Jesus in their life? You see, it's so easy for you to allow Jesus in your life. It's so easy. It's so easy. All you have to do is just ask him. He's always listening to you. 
He's waiting for you to just speak to him, just talk to him. He wants, he loves you so much. He, he's like, he's like having, he has to have an overwhelming crush on you. He loves you very much. Yes, he does. And he's waiting for you to speak to him. He's waiting for you to talk to him. He's waiting for you to reveal something to him, even though he already saw what was going on in your life. He's waiting. He's asking, do you really believe in me? Do you really believe in my power? Do you really believe that I really exist? Do you really believe I'm sitting on the right hand of the Father for your benefit? If so, then let's speak to one another. Let's communicate with one another. Let's interact with one another, intimately, spiritually, because you're a spiritual being, just like I'm a spiritual being. But the difference between me and you is that I have power. I have divine nature. But I can share that with you. You know, in the Bible, God is always willing to share his divine nature with you. He's always willing to share his divine power with you. Jesus is always willing to give you a thought. But the question is, do you want what Jesus is trying to hand you? Do you want Jesus? Or do you just want your own ways? Do you just want the ways of your family? Y'all know what I mean. You know, this Saturday, a lot of people, they're gonna get beer, they're gonna get alcohol, God bless you. They're gonna get beer, they're gonna get alcohol, and they're gonna drink it up. Not a lot of people, not everyone, but there are some people out here. They're going to the liquor store, talking about what time does, what time does the store close? I need to get that vodka. I need to get that liquor. Well, what time, what time does, does the alcohol store, it closes at 8? Oh, we need to get there quick, it's, it's 7.30. And some people, they say that, you know, they're Mormon. They, some people say that their mother or their father was Mormon. Some people say these things. And I think that's the problem. It's not a matter of if you're Mormon. It's a matter of, do you have a relationship with Jesus Christ? Do you have a relationship? Do you speak with God every single day? Forget about denomination. Just, do you have a relationship with Jesus Christ? in the same way that you have a relationship with your mother or your father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you? Again, Jesus is available every single day. Every single day. And he loves you very much. And he wants to be part of your life. Really well. Good. And you know, Jesus, I do have a, Jesus I do does have not wish anyone to perish. Right. Not one do. single person to perish. He wishes everyone to come yeah. into the knowledge That's of the, the truth. Thing. Is that he wants everyone Jesus to be in the kingdom of God with him. I didn't have a relationship for years. I was only and you know, uh, Jesus, a good and helpful person. Um, Jesus knows everything that you're going through. I, Jesus knows the suffering that you're going through. God bless you, man. Jesus knows. <laughs> Everything that you're going through. But the question is, do you want to be honest towards Jesus about everything that you're going through? Do you want to be honest? Do you want Jesus to protect you? Because perhaps there's a lot of things going on in your household that you don't want going on in your household. The children are acting wild. Our teenagers are going out with friends that you don't really agree with. And it feels like chaos yeah. in your household. So it feels like chaos. Our and so now you don't know what to do. You feel like you don't have any authority. It feels like you don't have any power. It feels like you don't have any power to do anything. You might be a single mother. You might be, I don't know, you might, you might have a, a father in the household, but the father's always busy at work. Working 12 hours a day, 10 hours a day, always away. And then once the father comes home, he doesn't want to mess with anything. He doesn't want to deal with anything at the home because he thinks 
that the mother got everything under control, but the mother just covers down upon the pain and the chaos and the frustration that's going on at home. And I think that's the problem with a lot of households in class. I think that's the problem with a lot of households in Carbon County. I mean, we claim, we claim to think that everything is all right, everything is good, everything is fine. But there's a lot of brokenness going on, a lot of abuse. You know, when people get frustrated, when people get impatient with one another, then things start to get chaotic. And then comes the abuse. Comes the abuse. The abuse happens in the household. And then if the abuse happens long enough, then people start to call it normal. People start to call it, well, it's just part of who we are. I mean, like, check this out. I'll be real honest. You know, anyway, so I. Everyone has a family that lives next to them or lives across from them that everything is just chaotic. Everything is just crazy. Everyone has, has a family across the way where like there's like eight people living there in a three bedroom house and everything is just chaotic. Either it's next door to you or it's across the way from you or it's a junction to your house. Everyone has that kind of family in their neighborhood, in their area. And so since this chaos is going on in that household, so What's year, gonna be? So you spend time with him daily. You know what? Yeah. Let me just say this: that brokenness, yeah. brokenness, it's not normal. Yeah. So I'm a big Chaos player. is not I'm normal right about in families. Brokenness is not normal in families. So why are we making it normal? That's my. Why are we making brokenness normal? Why are we making chaos normal? Why are we making frustrations, arguments, impatience normal? I have a lot of conversations. We should not make it normal. You like this one. You God, see, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. I'm not paying attention. You know, a lot so of people think that they're going to make it to the down. kingdom of God when their household is in chaos. A I lot of people think that they're going to make it to the kingdom of God, make it to heaven uh, when the there's a feast going on in the household. How is that even possible? If things are happening down here in your household or in your mind or in your heart that are chaotic, what makes you think you're going to bring the chaos up there? God's not going to allow that. I just waved him around, right? Problem. In the kingdom of God, it's always holy. Yeah. The kingdom of they God, everything is, right. everything, is right. everything is always right. Everything is always right. Everything is always clean. Everything is always clean in the kingdom of God. You're not going to be able to bring your foul language up there. You're not going to be able to bring your idolatry of video games up there. You're not going to be able to bring mm, your idolatry of working out because a lot of people work out like two hours a day trying to look like a model on a magazine. You're not going to be able to bring anything that is not whole. It's impossible. Impossible. You're not going to be able to bring your gossip up to the kingdom of God. If you're so used to gossip down here, obviously you're not going to change your mind when you pass away. You're not going to change your mind. If you live your whole life doing something, gossip, slandering, Backbite, things like that. And so during that then, time, I had to do a lot of meditation. I had seven we didn't know Then, you're going to be so used to it that when you reach the kingdom of God, you're going to feel uncleansed to God. You're going to feel unholy to God. You're going to look unholy. Having to do a lot God's going to see your spotted garment, and He's going to say, "Everything I've done in my life, the prophet." I never knew you. I have 26 years to run. You didn't allow me to cleanse you. Yeah, um, you didn't allow me to cleanse your heart. You knew of me. You spoke my name. Yeah, you attended church. Yeah, you knew the pastor. Yeah, you you ministered to to someone. I guess to one person, but then you gave up. <coughs> Depart from me. I never knew you. You know, Rich Road. You know, so you know the coal load on the savage coal what would Jesus say to you There's a building when you come before him right on the day of judgment? What would Jesus say about you, you personally, not about a day, not about 
a certain thing that's going on, but about you. You see, God is going to judge by your soul, what's attached to your soul. And God's going to see everything. Just as God sees everything now going on in your life, God will see your spotted garment. He's going to see the filth on your garment. He's going to see one spot of filth. It's going to be like it's going to be like gossip, and then another another spot of filth. It's going to be foul language. Another spot of filth. It's going to be alcoholism. Another spot of filth. It's going to be pornography. Because everybody's got a dream of kids. Because everyone's going to have a garment, but the garment's going to be spotted with filth. You know, in the Bible, it says, "All our works are nothing but filthy rags to God." God bless you. God bless you. It says, "All our works are nothing but filthy rags to God." There's no way that we can work our way to the kingdom of God. I'm not yet. No works. It is by His Spirit. Other problems. You know, in the Bible, Jesus says, if you love me, obey my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who will lead you into all truth. The world cannot perceive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. So the Holy Spirit... The Holy Spirit represents Jesus Christ. So if you love Jesus and you love his commandments, that means you love Jesus himself. If you love what Jesus speaks in scripture, that means you love Jesus himself. You know, a lot of people say, yeah, I love Jesus, I love the Lord. But how much do you love him? Do you love him more than your mother or your father? In the Bible, it says, Jesus says, if you love your mother or your father more than you love me, you are not worthy of being mine. God bless you, sir. Do you have a relationship with Jesus? Oh, yeah. Um, did Jesus tell you anything today about your life or about the world? Just anything. Anything at all. Small, big, doesn't matter. He said, I love testimony. Have, have nothing but love. God bless you. God bless you. How about you, too? You, too. Jesus loves you.